Hi, I'm Dave from the Burp Scanner development team, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about insertion points in Burp Scanner. So, insertion points have always been a source of confusion for our users because it's not always been clear within a request what is Burp Scanner targeting and what is the status of the insertion points that are being scanned. Uh, and one of the reasons for this is that Burp Scanner uh, hasn't always been the most visible in terms of what is going on under the hood. Uh, in older releases of Burp Suite, such as the one I have here, uh, you could only ever see a count of the insertion points that were present in any given request. You couldn't click on the request and see what the insertion points were. And actually, the insertion point count itself was only populated when the item started being actively scanned. So for these requests that haven't yet started, you didn't get a count of the insertion points. You couldn't see what was still to come. In Burp Suite 2024.1, we introduced the insertion point panel to help show what parts of a request is, are being attacked by Burp Scanner, and in particular, what the status of those insertion points are. So in Burp Suite 2024.1, you can see that the insertion point uh, count is populated for all of the items. And every time you click on an item, you have the option of either looking at the base response or the new insertion point panel. You can also right click on a request and show insertion points to make the panel appear if it's not already showing. And in this insertion points panel, you can see everything that Burp Scanner identified as being potentially worthy of attacking as an insertion point. So in this request, you can see we have URL parameters, we have cookie parameters, we have header parameters and folder and file name parameters as part of the request. There is also the opportunity to see how Burp Scanner can take insertion points from one location and put them in another location. So for instance, in this request, you can see that we changed the parameter from being in the URL to being a body parameter. Now, Burp Scanner doesn't scan these types of insertion points by default, but you can configure it to do so. And this was just a way of helping to surface that capability within the scanner. Another really cool thing about the insertion point view is that when you click on the insertion points themselves, you get a request highlight and the request will jump to the insertion point to show it you in your request response viewer. So you can always see exactly what Burp Scanner is trying to attack in the request. Uh, you also get a status icon on the right side of the panel, which indicates whether Burp has started auditing the insertion point or it should change from pending to auditing to audited when it's complete. Uh, and you can also see that in some cases, such as this uh, cookie, which is present on Gin and Juice Shop, which supports Wigger's deliberately vulnerable web application, this uh, insertion point has a base value, which uh, is... Base64 encoded, and when you Base64 decode that value, it reveals that there are a few more insertion points for us to attack. Uh, my colleague Tom already did a video about nested insertion points within Burp Scanner and how we can uh, attack uh, insertion points that are within certain encodings and make sure that the payloads are in the right encoding type for the for the server to understand. Um, but now we actually have a visual representation where you can click through each of the insertion points and see whether after decoding there was uh, further insertion points underneath it. Uh, this is a really big step forward for showing all of our users what the scanner is actually up to. Uh, we continue to try and make updates that help understand what, what the scanner is doing, how the scanner is working. So please give it a go and let us know if you have any feedback. <laughs>